to reach out into the vastness of space, to survive on an alien world, to explore the mysteries of civilization's past, to discover strange new life among distant planets. A pioneer faces each new day, ready to venture into new horizons. Each brave step Wanna is a... Want to talk to some of the hottest slime Wait. forums in the galaxy? Chat with me. Okay, Let's then. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining me. Today, I'll be reviewing Journey to the Savage Planet, which, in my opinion, is a wonderful parody on the usual space exploration game. Developed by Typhoon Studios, this colorful homage to classic science fiction takes every opportunity to avoid being serious in any way. It proves that even when lost and isolated in the far reaches of space, toilet humor is still hilarious. The good news is, you don't have to do it alone, since Journey to the Savage Planet also includes a co-op mode. That's right, you can bring a friend along to watch in horror while you do things like this. As for this review, I'll be discussing my thoughts on the solo experience. In the game, you wake up after a deep sleep to find yourself stranded on the alien world ARY-26. You're immediately greeted with an introduction video from the CEO of Kindred Aerospace, who informs you that you are one of the lucky individuals to be selected for a research expedition to the stars! Unfortunately, you're also informed that this is a one-way trip unless you can find some source of fuel to get yourself back home. After that, you're introduced to the ship's onboard computer, who ends up keeping you company for the rest of the game. Oh, cool! We find what appears to be an alien feces, and your first instinct is to just pick it right up. You're asked to choose a photo of yourself, which effectively decides on your character's various vocalizations. And yes, if you choose the dog, I, I think you get the picture. You're instructed to release a series of drones out to survey the area and mark any points of interest that they find. You also find that your landing caused a bit of damage to the ship, so some repairs are required. From there, you venture out to collect resources, which are generally found by hitting mineral deposits and by making the local fauna explode. Just don't forget to scan everything as you go, because this is needed to complete your research on the planet. If you're feeling humanitarian, you can also choose to feed the wildlife, which will reward you by expelling a small amount of resources that you'll surely want a plastic baggie to pick up. But don't think you'll be able to remain the passive explorer for too long. This planet also has a variety of dangerous predators that aim to take you out. For the most part, the enemies aren't too difficult, but I did find some of the mini-boss encounters a bit frustrating. Even when you gain the ability to dash-dodge, they manage to predict your movements and match your speed a little too often. Each one has a glowing hit marker to tell you exactly where to aim, and you just need to be able to position yourself to take the shots. Larger boss battles are very similar, each one throwing a different set of attacks at you, but having the same easy-to-find vulnerable spots. These big baddies are the primary roadblocks in your adventure, so defeating them is essential to reaching new areas. When you die, you get restructured back at your ship. The game also includes a hard mode that limits both your time and the number of times you can be brought back from death. And while the game refers to it as a planet, the computer informs you accurately that it's more like a series of floating islands. You can and will fall from the edge from time to time, only to have one of your drones come and save you by teleporting you back to land, with slightly diminished health. While you're navigating the area, you find a strange orange goo that you eat because what's the worst that could happen? This actually provides you with a permanent increase to your maximum health and stamina. And on the subject of power-ups, you can also use your ship's 3D printer to get gear upgrades using whatever resources you've collected. Both of these boosts provide you with much-needed help in conquering the many obstacles that you'll face throughout the game. In your journal, you'll find a number of research tasks. Completing specific sets will provide you with a promotion, which enables you to craft better upgrades. Journey to the Savage Planet is, at its core, a 3D platformer. In your adventures, you find puzzles, secret hidden areas, and all sorts of other challenges. Part of your research also includes locating artifacts that provide clues on the strange buildings and machinery on the planet, remnants of previous visitors. 
Once you've completed your research goals and located enough fuel, you're free to launch your ship and journey home. Or you can continue on and find every secret and obtain every upgrade that you may have missed. Journey to the Savage Planet is an average to short game. It took me roughly 14 hours to reach the end, and that was without going full completionist on it. While some of the enemies seemed a little overly difficult at times, I found the general gameplay to be very good. I think the developers made wise choices to keep the gameplay from being too complicated, while also providing plenty to do. I thought the variety of puzzles and encounters were good and evenly spaced out to keep the game interesting. The vibrant, cartoonish look of the world was well-designed and perfect for the game's comedic overtones. This is why you vaccinate your kids. It's science. It works. The soundtrack was cool, and the overall visual quality of the game is superb. In my opinion, Journey to the Savage Planet is a must-play. It thinks you're gonna kill it. Aw, how accurate. Well, that's it for this session. I hope you all enjoyed. Until next time, I'll catch you on the flip side.